Hello, everybody. Welcome back. This is Jonathan Gar. It's been a while. Yeah, I took a little break there. Um, anyway, let's get right back into it. This is section three of the logic interlude, and this one covers sets and elements. And I'm not going to spend any time, any of your time, talking about whether this is a fundamental mathematical property or not. If you're a mathematician, you probably already know the answer to that question. If you're not, then now is probably not the right time to discover the answer. So we often talk about sets in mathematics. And by sets, we mean a collection or group of things. So we say a set, S-E-T. And a set contains a collection of objects. And these could be anything, though typically we're dealing with numbers, uh, especially at this level. But in the future, we'll talk about shapes and we'll talk about other things, functions and, uh, and things like that as well. And so these collection of objects are called elements. So the two important words to learn is set and element. So if we say X is an element of set S, um, let's say set R, we know what R is, so I'm gonna use fancy R there. Then that means, and set R being the set of all real numbers, then we say, it's the same as saying X is a real number. Okay. Uh, all right, let's talk about relationships between sets. So we have S and T are sets. And we say that S is a subset of T. If every element of S is also in T. Pretty simple. So it's a pretty simple test. You just go through all the elements of S and check that they're all in T. So we could say the set of all rational numbers, uh, I, think, I think that's called Q. Q is a subset of R, okay? All rational numbers are in the set of real numbers. We could say the set of all integers, I forgot, I think it's Z. Z is the magic letter for integers is a subset of Q and R. So we'll just write Q because this would imply it's also a subset of R. If Z is in Q and all of Q is in R, then Z is also in R. And the set of all integers, um, why does it say it twice? The set of all integers is a subset of the set of rational numbers. It is also a subset of R, yeah. The set of boys is a subset of all children. So boys are children. The set of all real numbers x, such that 2x plus 3 is less than 5, is a subset of all real numbers. Let me show you what that looks like. So if we have 2x plus 3 is less than 5, all x would satisfy this equation, would it? No. Uh, this is a subset of the real numbers because there's certain x that wouldn't satisfy this. If I chose, if I chose like 2 for x, that 2 times 2 is 4 plus 3, that'd be 7, that'd be greater than 5. So this is a subset. So x such that 2x plus 3 minus 5 is a subset of r. It's not all real numbers, but it's a large number of them. If s is a subset of s. So any set s is a subset of itself. Um, sometimes we have a condition that means there are no elements of a set. Let's take a look at what that looks like. So let's say we wanted all real numbers. We want all x such that x is less than zero and simultaneously, I don't know if you can see that, yes, x is greater than zero. Well, what real numbers would satisfy that? The answer is there are no such real numbers. So we say this set is, we say empty, okay? Notice that we're not spending a lot of time, or any time at all, talking about notation. Uh, what about x such that 2x all over x plus 1 is greater than 1, and x is less than 1 half? Well, let's, let's uh, solve, or let's rewrite this. Let's use orange. So this would mean that 2x uh, is greater than x plus 1 when x plus 1 is greater than 0. 
and 2x is less than x plus 1 when x plus 1 is less than 0. And we can't have x plus 1 equal to 0 because that would be bad. So now we say, well, let's take a look at these. We have 2x greater than x plus 1. Uh, so we divide both sides by, let's move actually this x to that side. So we have 2x minus x is greater than 1. So if x is greater than 1, in this case, in their case, we have x would be less than 1 following the same logic. Logic. 2x, why would this not work? x is less than 1 half. x is less than 1. Well, there aren't solutions. Why, why would that not work? So if x is 0, for instance, oh, it has to be greater than, yeah. To, so if x was 0, this would be, okay, let's try x plus 1 is less than 0. Let's try x, x is less than minus 1, and x is greater than 1. So when x is less than minus 1, yeah, so it has to be x is less than minus 1, and x is less than minus 1 at the same time because of this condition up here. So we get x... Um, so when x is less than minus 1, x is, let's say, minus 2. So we have minus 2 plus minus 1. That's minus 1 in the denominator. And then we have, why is that? Why is that? There is no element. Positive numbers, that's right. So negative numbers will work, but positive numbers um, and, let's write that in blue. I missed that keyword positive. This is why you have to read carefully and not be a schmuck like me. And x is greater than 0. So in this case, when x has to be greater than 0, there is no solution for this problem. Moving right along, sometimes we want to prove that two sets are equal. And to do so, we have to prove that the sets are subsets of each other. For instance, let's take the set S such that um, S contains X such that uh, 1 is less than or equal to X is less than or equal to 2. So S contains elements X such that 1 is less than. And we have a set over here T uh, that contains Y such that uh, 5 is less than or equal to y is less than or equal to 10. And we want to prove, so we're going we're gonna to make an s prime set. This contains all 5x such that x is in s, right? So x is going to follow the same conditions for s. And it's also going to, s prime is going to contain 5x. And over here, we're going to have t prime contains all y over 5 such that uh, y is in t, okay? And we want to prove that s prime and t are the same, and s and t prime are the same. So we want to prove that s prime is the same as t. In order to do that, we have to show that s prime is a subset of t, and t is a subset of s prime. So we have to prove both of these. So in order to prove that s prime is a subset of t, we note that when we take 5x, so we note that 5 is less than or equal to 5x is less than or equal to 10. Okay, So note that we could substitute in y. We have the same conditions for t. So therefore, s is a subset of t. And indeed, when we start with t, we can substitute in 5x for, for y. And we see that that is indeed also a subset of s prime. So we, we prove this by showing that, that 5x is a substitute for y with the same conditions. Over here, if we want to prove that s is equal to t prime, we have to do the same thing. s is a subset of t prime, and we have to show that t prime is a subset of s. So in order to do that, we note that if we take y over 5, we get 1 is less than or equal to y over 5 is less than or equal to 10. And indeed, y over 5 could stand in for x. So we know that t prime is the same set of numbers as s. So that's there. And also we can start here and go this direction where we take x, replace it with y over 5, and we see that s is a subset of t prime. And so this proves, this is how you prove that two sets are equivalent. There's not much else to say on sets. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. This video is part of my series on Sergey Lang's basic mathematics. You can click here to watch the rest of the videos in the playlist. You can click here to learn more about me, and you can click here to support my channel. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.